Hello and welcome everyone. Today a little bit of a different video. Uh, I'm gonna be talking about how we made uh, an auto splitter for Factorio. Uh, I say we because this was a very much a joint effort uh, with uh, my good friend Mr. Hug. Uh, and basically I want to talk you through how uh, the steps we took to make like a basic auto splitter uh, and uh, some stuff that I think is very useful if you want to extend this one or if in general uh, you want to make an auto splitter for another game and you you're run into trouble or you don't quite know uh, where to start. So first things first. Uh, in live split uh, you can time your speed runs uh, with splits and an auto splitter is exactly what it says on the tin. So it uh, gives a way to automatically split at certain moments in uh, your speedrun. So uh, we're using live split, uh, and live split has a language called ASL, auto script language, uh, and that can be used to, to create an auto splitter. You can also do a lot more complicated stuff with, with a bunch of C sharp code. Uh, we didn't get to that yet. Um, this is really more about the basics of how you uh, want to get an auto splitter to work. Uh, so how does it work? Well, it reads the memory of the game that you're playing. So uh, it will just, yeah, it will really dig into uh, like the raw uh, stuff that, that's going on inside your computer. Um, and in order to get there, we need an address. So we need to know, like, for example, if we want to split on a rocket being launched, we need an address for a piece of memory that changes when a rocket is launched. Um, so that's the first step that we're gonna take later. Um, but an address is not all because an address depends very much on uh, when you run a game, it depends on your computer, how much memory you have, so uh, how much other stuff is running. So whenever you launch a game, it, it gets loaded into a particular piece of memory and that address is always uh, dependent on that piece of memory. So we need a more stable way than an address to uh, find uh, a piece of memory that we want to watch for uh, splitting automatically. And uh, this is where a pointer path comes in. So a pointer is, is a, a piece of memory that actually points to another piece of memory. And the way a pointer path works is it's basically a description of uh, pointers with offsets, um, which brings you from uh, the start of the binary, uh, so in this case Factorio being loaded, uh, in a couple of steps to the piece of memory that we want to read for the auto splitter. So it's always an offset, uh, then it says, okay, read a pointer, then you go to that address, then there's another offset, etc., etc. Um, this all seems a little bit complicated maybe, uh, but luckily we have a great tool to, uh, to get these things, uh, both the addresses and the pointer paths. It's called Cheat Engine. Uh, it's used uh, uh, primarily, I'd say, for um, cheating in single player games. Um, so it contains a lot of tools to read memory as well. And that's the part that we're gonna uh, use today. So in order to make this happen, uh, we uh, tried finding out what resources were already there. Um, fairly quickly, uh, we found an old Alda splitter. Uh, it was about three years old, uh, so it, it worked on a pretty old version of, of Factorio relative to today. Um, we tried it out, it didn't work anymore, which is not surprising at all. Um, but it gave, gave us some inspiration on where to look. Um, we also found a cheat table, um, uh, which is uh, a little bit more uh, involved than, than what we uh, needed. Like there's a bunch of scripts in there which can be used to cheat in Factorio, which is not really something we were interested in. Um, it did contain some, some very useful information, um, but it wasn't, uh, it didn't contain exactly what we needed. So we first tried to be inspired by the old auto splitter, which uh, found the, the research text. So in Factorio, there's 
uh, always a, a piece of text in the top right which it says either uh, press something to uh, get the select the next research or it's researching something and then it says the name of the research and it also shows when it's finished so that would be a really useful uh, tool to find some some points to auto split on uh, and we tried finding this address but it didn't quite work out um, it just we couldn't find a stable uh, pointer path and uh, yeah it's it it was kind of a red herring um, and after someone in the speedrunning discord reminded us of the cheat table i uh, we took another look at it and uh, we realized there was some very useful information uh, in there and we used that to get stable pointer paths at it in the end so what i want to show next is uh, firstly how to get the address uh, and then we'll look into how we uh, get that to a pointer path okay so what we want to do is uh, find the address of the number of rockets launched uh, because that that can signal the final split in the game right so once you've launched one rocket uh, in any percent you you win the game so that's the final split um, and so what we have on the left is cheat engine and we're gonna connect that to our factorio process um, and yeah we can open that up um, you don't see anything yet because we need to scan the memory and in order to do that, what I'm going to do is uh, set the number of rockets launched. Uh, Factorio has a lot of uh, nice cheating commands. Uh, and uh, let's set it to, uh, let's do uh, one, two, three. Uh, so now the number of rockets launched, I, I manually put to one, two, three. So we're going to scan for that value. Uh, I think it's four bytes. So let's do a uh, first scan. And... Now it's found 585 addresses with the value 123. So in order to discover which one is the correct one, we're going to increase this to, uh, let's say, 345. So we now set it to 345, and then uh, we're going to see which of these addresses are now have now changed. So we already see that some of them have changed. So let's do next scan. So we have three of them left right now. And uh, let's see if we can narrow that down a little bit more. Four, five, six. Let's try that. Okay, they've all changed. Um, that seems okay. Yeah, there we go. So if I now walk around, then there's some other. These guys become some other value, and this is still uh, the value that we need it to be. So it's now four, five, six. And just to check if this is the correct value, um, what we're gonna do is launch a rocket and see if this actually works so let's add our stack inserters over here uh, we're gonna get some very quick progress meanwhile let's add this to the address list and we'll call this rockets launched so what this this is an, an address in memory it has a value and we're now just watching this address so yeah, we're ready to start launching the rocket. So let's see if we launch it, then this, this value should change to 457. Uh, and if it does, then it means we have a variable that we uh, could probably use to, to split on. Um, in, in the case for the auto splitter, it's also important that it changes at the right time. So we want this to change right as uh, the pop -up comes up that we've won the game there we go and it's four five seven so that's that's pretty awesome okay so this is uh, how you find an address in this case the key to this was finding uh, this command so in order to do that uh, you need to uh, look through the the lua reference for factorio uh, there's a lot of stuff in there uh, and there's a bunch of variables that you can read that can be useful for uh, this auto splitter kind of stuff. So all the research is in there as well. Um, so yeah, this is how you find the address of uh, the thing that we want to watch. So next up, what we're going to try to find is how to 
get a pointer path to this particular set. Okay, so in order to find the pointer path, uh, we're, we could just do a brute force search, um, but as it turns out, that's kind of tough. It takes long and it's not even guaranteed that you'll find a good uh, pointer path. Um, so what we want to do is be a little bit more specific and um, this is where the cheat table uh, by Bloody Bone comes in. Uh, and this like, contains a lot of scripts that uh, get you like cheating stuff within the game. But the thing that we are interested in are the pointers that, uh, that they found. And the most important one is actually the, the global context. So this address is just factorio.global and it's a specific address within the game. Um, I don't quite know what this is. I think it's some sort of debug symbol and, and that's how we find the actual address. Um, but it's, it's uh, static uh, in the sense that it's always the same offset from factorio.exe. So this is very useful to start our search because all of the other pointers here are actually uh, starting with this global pointer. Um, so everything he's found so far is, is dependent on this and everything we've uh, put in the auto splitter is also uh, starts at this point. So we would want to find um, a pointer path that starts with this guy, though there is actually uh, a slightly better way still. Okay, so in order to find the actual pointer path, we can even be a little bit more specific than the Factorio global pointer, because one of the things we have here is the Factorio force manager. And if we look at um, the command we just entered, we did game, player, force, then rocket launch. Uh, force is, as I understand it, the name for uh, a group of players belonging together. So if you do multiplayer, then you're one force. If you uh, somehow do multiplayer with opposite teams, then uh, you're in different forces. Um, so the force manager is likely uh, the anchor point for this, this uh, rockets launched variable. Uh, so what I did is I copied this, uh, this address uh, right, so if we look at this, it's it starts at Factorio Global, and has a, has a couple offset, and it leads to this particular address. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna do a pointer scan for this address, and I've set this up to be a little bit rigged, and um, so uh, I know what the answer is gonna be, and I don't want to wait forever. So I know we only need two pointers. So normally this would be like five or six maybe even seven, like it, it can go quite deep. So um, if you want to uh, limit your options, you want to make sure that uh, uh, yeah, th this is, is uh, at the level you expect it to be. Um, but if you're missing stuff out, uh, increasing this can help. Increasing the maximum offset can help. Um, enabling this, uh, having a couple different offsets per node it's going to make it a lot speedier, but you might also miss valid results. So I tend to leave this unchecked because I don't really know how it impacts the search space. Whereas here, like the maximum offset and the max level, I understand like it, it places some very clear limits on uh, what uh, the search space is. Um, if you can, you can look at uh, specific offsets. Uh, you can do this by inspecting what code accesses the memory address you're, you're interested in. Um, it can help limit the search space, um, and it, which means that you, you can do a, a scan more quickly. Uh, other stuff to, to speed up your scan, uh, using a safe pointer map is very useful if you want to do repeated scans. It takes a little bit to create one, uh, so I'm not going to bother with it now, but if you uh, are exploring and looking for a valid path, then this is very, very useful. Um, there's also this option, compare results with another safe pointer map. The way this works is um, you start the game, you find the address that you need, you create a pointer map, 
Um, so that's that's also in this menu. You just click this one instead. Um, and then you close the game, you start it back up again, and you get an address uh, for the same thing. And then what you do is you do a pointer scan in this in the current game. And if you check this, what you can add is the previous pointer map and the address in the, the old situation. Uh, and what it then does is it, it immediately compares if a pointer uh, paths that it finds in the current game, if they would also lead to the correct address in the previous boot up. So this is a really good way to quickly eliminate uh, false positives. Uh, for now, uh, I don't need it since uh, I know what we're going for. So I'll leave that unchecked. This is the really important one, the base address. Um, so I now use the force manager base address. Um, so if you don't know if, you, if you're in the correct subtree, you can use the global address here. Uh, if you uh, want to be more specific, for example, for technology, there's an address a level deeper that's a little bit more specific. But in this case, this is going to be uh, perfectly fine. So let's start searching for this. Um, we need to uh, save the results in a pointer list. Uh, that's fine. Um, it's going to generate the pointer map, which is going to take a bit. Uh, normally, uh, for me, the largest part is in the second phase. But now, since we uh, only uh, use a maximum path length of two, it's going to be very quickly done. And uh, we find our one path that's, uh, that's correct. So if you don't know, quite know what you're looking for, you're going to have a lot more results here. And what you want to do then is is uh, save that pointer list, reboot the game, uh, uh, do your exploration again, find the new address and check if any of the, the pointer paths that you have actually point to the correct location. So uh, once you found uh, the pointer path and you're sure it's correct, the, the final step is to include it in uh, the auto splitter script. Uh, and we see that over here. So here we have our, our pointer uh, to the num rockets location. Uh, so this is a little bit weird. Um, so what we did to get this initial offset is we have the factorial global address. Uh, and that one is actually at a specific offset from the start of factorial.exe. So uh, what you want to do is subtract um, the the address that you get for factorio global uh, and subtract from that uh, the the factorio dot x uh, and that gives you this offset um, it's different for different versions of the game and also between the steam build and the non steam build um, but it it is consistent within that and it's it's used at the base for all our split uh, addresses uh, so that's actually fine. Uh, then the next stuff is the, the, the offsets that we had for the force manager. So that's that's these guys. And then we have finally the, the zero and the, the five uh, D8 offset uh, that we got uh, when searching specifically for our, the num rockets launched. Um, you see we have a couple of these for uh, research as well. So these have uh, all a, a common base path and then a different final offset. Uh, so uh, finding these is a similar process. You just flick the research on and off using a cheat command um, and search for the address that changes. And then if you use this path as a base, you only need to search with depth one to find new researches. Um, there's probably also a way to get predict production uh, statistics in here too. So for example, to trigger something on the first blue science produced, for example, uh, but that's something that we haven't really gotten to yet. Uh, other stuff that we probably want to look into uh, currently, all the splits are just in here, but you can also put in options to enable and disable splits. That would be fairly useful. Um, so yeah, that's, that's uh, how far we got.
So, uh, what did we learn from all of this? So firstly, I've shown you a little bit of the mechanics involved and the software used to uh, find addresses and pointer paths and how to put them in a, an auto splitter script. Uh, there's decent documentation of, on all of these things and there's a lot of videos that go way more in depth on specific strategies uh, uh, to, to find uh, pointer paths, for example, to do pointer scans, etc. Um, but I want to highlight some of the things that I learned that are a little bit more overarching and uh, can up be applied to different games as well. Um, so firstly, uh, and this should be a no-brainer, use existing resources. So at first we sort of um, ignored the cheat table that was there because it didn't contain the specific stuff that we need needed um, but it actually did contain like very important pointers that we could use as a base so uh, that was one um, the existing auto splitter script was very useful as well just to um, inspire uh, let it know let us know that it could be done but in the end the specific method there used to be uh, which used to be totally fine is now a little bit more complicated it might still work but we haven't managed to get it to work and this is a little bit more stable and um, so uh, but it was still very useful to have an example uh, to know what to do there um, and secondly uh, exploiting the structure of the game so this is something uh, that depending on the game you want to do in a different way uh, in factorio there's a very good uh, api documentation uh, there's like the fact that there is an api is just uh, it's very useful for the modding community but it also gives a certain structure to the game and this is how we manage to find most of the pointer paths by actually looking at how is it structured in the api and then sort of assuming that that also was the structure uh, for the pointer path which makes a lot of sense but it wasn't totally clear at first like especially since there the Lua involved could be a little bit dynamic, but in the end, this, this actually does work. Uh, for a lot of other games, uh, you might want to uh, do some reverse engineering in order to get this. Um, stuff that I still don't know, I still don't know what the Factorio Global is exactly. Is it the debug symbol? Maybe. I don't know what, what else it could be. Um, uh, so if you know that, uh, don't uh, please leave a comment. If you have any further questions or stuff that's not clear, uh, don't forget to uh, to leave a comment too. Um, if you enjoyed this video, uh, please like it. And if you want to see more of my videos, uh, either speedruns or uh, Factorio C-Block, uh, don't forget to subscribe. Thanks.